Hey hey, hello. Just jumping on for a quick video here because I've got something new. Well, used. I totally shouldn't be making this video just now because I've actually got like three Fazley videos to do reviews of. They're just sitting up there. And the last thing I need is another guitar. But sometimes you just can't turn down a good deal. Most days I could be found scouring through eBay or Gumtree looking for deals on guitars. I seen a guitar I was interested on Gumtree the other week but it was a really good deal but it wasn't the colour that I wanted. And then today, this one turned up on Gumtree. Gumtree is like a UK version of Craigslist or Spock. Is that still a thing? So I was halfway through editing one of my Fazley videos, I seen this deal, so I grabbed an empty gig bag, jumped on the bus to go and grab it. Because I don't drive. Technically, legally, I can drive a car, but I don't own one. So from the pictures, the guitar looked great. I was familiar with the model. So I asked the seller his reason for selling because I didn't want to waste the trip. Because in Scotland, the buses do this really inconvenient thing where instead of just taking you to go and get your guitar, they drop off all the other passengers on the way. <sighs> what? What's that all about? So it takes quite a while. <sighs> anyway, the seller got back to me and he said he was selling it because he has too many guitars and he's trying to raise funds to buy his son a drum kit. So off I went. The seller was Marson, lovely chap, nice collection of guitars too. You might even be watching, if you're watching, hello Marson. Right, so what is it? Let's open it up. I've maybe even put it on the thumbnail, who knows. Ready? Here we go. Like an unboxing, unbagging of a used guitar. It's a Harley Benton. Here it is. Oh. Look at that. Can you see it? It's a beauty. Harley Benton, CST24. <sighs> Spec list is phenomenal. Another reason Marson was selling this was because he liked this so much that he upgraded to the PRS version. I had a wee play of it at Marson's house and it's not set up to my taste but I could feel the potential in it. That's a future video by the way, being able to see potential in guitars. Experience and do you need to try guitars out in store? Something to talk about in the future. So what I'm going to do right now is set it up to my preferred specifications. It's got 10s on it, I'm going to put 9s on it. I know it looks like a PRS, but PRS is 25 inch scale. This is 25 and a half, so I'm going to treat it like my Fender's 9s. That's what I put on them. And after that, I'll adjust the action a bit. Just give it a wee tidy up, but it's in really good condition. Immaculate condition. Marson, you've looked after this. Thank you. In the future, I'll do a full review, but Let's do some changes now. I've got a gig soon, so I've kind of got to hurry up. I love it when we get to this bit and you get the opportunity to wipe away from the dust. That's nice. I've never heard a guitar with this type of trend before, so cool. So annoying, you can never get one of these to come out of the pack. It's always like 10.
Okay, so where are we at? What happened? What did we do? So I took off the strings, cleaned up the fretboard with just like a antibacterial wet wipe that you get for your kitchen or something like that. It's soft, it's not like super duper chemical toxic. And I just give it a good rub to get any sort of excess stuff off. That's all on there temporarily and then I dry it off and then we lemon oil it quite generously, rub that in, leave it to sit for a wee minute, uh, clean the rest of the body, uh, sorry, polish the rest of the body and then wipe off the excess lemon oil, get the new strings on, went for a set of elixirs, go with what you know. That's going to give me a better idea of what this guitar can feel like because I use elixir nines on everything because they're the best. Tuned it up, stretched out the strings, I find that doing that between four and six times, stretch, retune, stretch, retune, that usually lets them settle in a bit. From changing the strings, I'd actually adjusted the bridge posts mistakenly when I was polishing it, and I've never used this bridge before, so the new gauge strings and possibly turning these a bit too low resulted in the first and second strings buzzing a little bit, so you might have seen me with that massive screwdriver there taking that up a little bit. But yeah, now it's... Uh, it's all good. I've not played it properly yet, I'm going to have a wee playthrough now and you know what, we might even just plug it in. But first, how does it sound acoustically? Because it is semi-hollow after all. You know what, it's not spectacular, it's not super semi-hollow. It actually just sounds like a really resonant hollow body guitar. It's actually a bit heavier than I would expect as well. We'll get to that in the full review video later. Harley Benton have actually just came out with some new versions of these models which look really good but I thought I'd jump on this one while we can get it. Let's see how it sounds plugged in. We have the Roswell Laugh pickups, which I don't have a good relationship with in previous guitars. So let's hear how they sound in a semi-hollow body. Here we go. Another thing I want to check is these Nutrix silent cables that I use. A lot of budget guitar jack sockets don't accept these for some reason. Let's see if the Harley Benton will accept. If not, I'll have to turn the cable the other way around. So you can hear the cable works. But just now, it does not because it's silent. You need this wee shield pulled back for it to work. Comes active once it goes in the guitar. Here we go. We have power. It works. That's fantastic news. It's hard to tell. It does sound really bright that I like, but we'll have another variable in here. The brand new Elixir strings also sound very bright. Middle. Neck. I like it, it's, uh, it's kind of buzzy sounding, but that's pretty much how I like my guitar set up. I like a little bit of buzz so I can get that super low action. Because I'm very weak. We'll also get split sounds in here too. Back to the bridge. Bridge split. Middle, split, middle and neck split, neck split, can it do it? Eh, it's something, it's its own thing. I've kind of started doing this thing where if the guitar passes the first initial test, like this one has already, then I get to treat it with some nice effects. So I'm going to go change over the sound, get a little bit of reverb on, a little bit of delay, Go through a more voxy type amp. And I've even turned the volume up a bit too. Right. That might be high output. It's kind of breaking up a little bit. I like it. That's the bridge. Let's get to the neck.
really bright, really nice tones. Yes! Gain time. I just went out of tune a little bit but it's fair enough. You might have noticed that I took the truss rod cover off when I was putting the strings on because it's a lighter gauge of strings so there's a good chance we'll need to adjust it. It feels like I probably need to add a little bit more relief in the neck. Uh, it's probably too straight, we're getting a bit more buzzing or it could come up from here a little bit. I'll tweak it a bit more and get it dialed in but so far so good. First impressions, I really like this and these laugh pickups from Roswell which I usually do not like at all kind of work. So how about you, Harley Benton, CST, any experience? Let me know in the comments. This isn't usually my kind of thing, but so far I kind of like it. I'm interested to see if it's a keeper. If you've enjoyed the video, consider giving it a wee like, wee thumbs up, or you can even subscribe to the channel. You might like that. Good chance you won't, but... Okay, thanks for watching. Until next time, see you later.